Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy Thanksgiving. It's Serena here with you today for another holiday tutorial. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my pumpkin pie. Now there is not a lot of food that I would say that I'm genuinely good at making, but if there's one thing I'm really good at, it's pumpkin pie. Call it a gift, call it a curse, it is what it is. So I just use the Libby's pumpkin pie recipe. It is on the back of every can of Libby's pumpkin pie. And I just tweak it a little bit. Basically, I just add a lot of extra spices. So if you have been living under a rock and have never seen the Libby's pumpkin pie recipe, then I'm going to enlighten you today. So this is gonna be a super laid back video. I'm gonna do a quick talk through. Obviously, this is not gonna be like a pro chef video. There's not gonna be like cool shots of like my pumpkin pie and like all this stuff. This is not the Food Network. This is Serena Grace Sellis. And we're working with what we got here, okay? So if you guys wanna see how I make my pumpkin pie for the holidays, then go ahead and keep watching. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to really quickly show you what you're going to need for this recipe. So the Libby's can of pumpkin always has their famous Libby's pumpkin pie recipe on the back. So that makes it super convenient. So I'm gonna read off to you what you're gonna need and then I'll just show you what I did differently. So first, you are going to need 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar. So any white granulated sugar is fine. You are going to need a deep dish pie shell. So these are the nine inch deep dish pie shells. I got the Pillsbury ones. These are in the freezer section of most grocery stores. I think I picked these up from Target and they are the nine inch ready to bake deep dish pie shells. Make sure you get deep dish. If you don't, this liquidy recipe is gonna spill all over the place and it's gonna be a big disaster in your oven, which I know you don't want. You just want pie, you don't want a mess. So deep dish pie shells. And you are going to need salt. This recipe calls for one half teaspoon of salt. My husband and I only use the Himalayan pink salt to cook with, so that's why you're like, that doesn't look like salt. This is the Himalayan pink salt. Um, you can use white table salt if you wanna use white table salt too. You're gonna need, obviously, your can of pumpkin. This is the 15 ounce can. And you're gonna need your carnation or whatever brand of evaporated milk that you wanna use. Um, this is the 12 ounce jar can. So remember your proportions. At the store, in the baking aisle, there's a bunch of different cans of milk and pumpkin. If you want the right proportions for a single pie, 15 ounce pumpkin, 12 ounce evaporated milk. Very important. And then obviously you're going to need two eggs. I just have my um, free range cage free eggs. You're gonna need two of those. And then let's talk about spices. So the recipe calls for ground cinnamon, which is what I have here. This giant economy size thing of cinnamon because I'm cinnamon obsessed. You're gonna need um, ginger, cloves, and cinnamon. So I personally, what I do is, in addition to the ginger, cloves, and cinnamon, I also add allspice and I add nutmeg. Now, allspice literally is allspice. So there's a lot of, um, spices in here, but these are all the good like fall, Christmassy spices in here. So it's kind of a mix of everything and I think that it adds a really great flavor to the pie. And I also, like I said, I add the nutmeg. I love nutmeg and I think it goes fantastic with the pie. So um, I, that's my little secret is I pretty much triple these and then I'll double add some extra little teaspoons in the pie of the little secret spices there. So basically that's it. 
So let's get started. I am going to show you how I threw it all together. Sorry if you guys are hearing little nails tapping on the tile. My shepherd is just walking around and dropping her ball everywhere and making noise, aren't you? Anyways, so let's get started. All right, so first step is you are going to mix your dry ingredients in a small bowl, whisk it around, and we're gonna do that. I got my sugar, and I'm constantly gonna be looking at the back of this can throughout this entire video. Like I said, it's gonna be casual, okay? So don't come for me, Food Network, don't come for me. All right, so 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar. We can do that. We got our measuring cups here. And just so you guys know, I'm dog sitting right now. So I've got my poodle, which you know you've met Laboo. I don't know if you guys have met my shepherd. Maybe in like a recent vlog a while ago. She doesn't obviously show up in videos that often because she's pretty laid back. And then I'm dog sitting my mother-in-law's dog while she's down south um, visiting my family and uh, one of Marcus's brothers for Thanksgiving. Um, and she is switching off with us. So we're watching her dog right now and then she's gonna come up and stay at our house and then watch all of the dogs together. Um, so it's a pretty good little even trade. Um, and um, my little darling, Abigail is her name, my mother-in-law's dog. She is like, <sighs> she's very vocal. So if you guys hear a little growling or barking or woofing, that's who it is <laughs> throughout the video. <laughs> so, all right, so we put our sugar in. That was 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar. I just use 1 fourth three times. You got it? And then I need one half teaspoon of salt. You guys, is it just me? Or does anybody else read the teaspoon and then accidentally grab the tablespoon? If I had a dollar for every time I did that, I could quit my job. I do that all the time when I'm trying to bake stuff. So then we're gonna need one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. But you guys know we're not doing that. So instead of one tiny teaspoon, cause guys, like, no, just no. That would be two of these. No, we need like four of these. <laughs> so instead of the one teaspoon, we're gonna do two teaspoons. Maybe even more, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, move, I'm using half measurements here, by the way. This is a half teaspoon. So obviously I used it four times. So that looks pretty good. I think we'll go with that. Close that up. And then we got ginger. So this is a half teaspoon of ginger. I don't wanna go too, too aromatic. So instead of like quadrupling it, I think we'll just double it. We'll do like one half teaspoon and then like another scant half teaspoon. There we go. All right. And then I think it wants cloves next. Yes, one fourth teaspoon of ground cloves. Yeah, we're gonna do more than that. Like I said, Ooh, spilled some now. Oh, that's the nutmeg. There's the cloves. Nobody panic, I found the cloves. All right, so we're gonna do, instead of a fourth teaspoon of the cloves, we're gonna do a half. Close that guy up. And then, like I said, I just feel like you can't go wrong with allspice, personally. So we're gonna do one whole teaspoon of allspice. Just rubbing it in there. Hope you guys can see it. Like I said, this is not gonna be fancy. I'm not on the Food Network, guys. This is a YouTube channel, okay? This is low budget. And then the nutmeg that I spilled pretty much all over the place. I think we're just gonna do, I really like the nutmeg. I really like the nutmeg, but I feel like it is a wee bit grainier. 
than the other spices. So every now and again, you're gonna feel a little bit of graininess. It doesn't feel like you're eating sand, but you'll feel a little bit of graininess, but. Guys, I like nutmeg so much, I don't care. So I think we're just gonna kinda like do like a scant teaspoon. That's probably why they don't call for nutmeg in the recipe actually. Probably because it's kinda grainy, but I don't care, I love it so much. So, we got our dry ingredients together, right? We got it all. I always have to double check, double check and triple check. Yep, yep, yep. So now we're gonna whisk it together. So let's start whisking. Let me get a whisk, let me find a whisk. And then let me clean up my nutmeg mess. Just put that over there. In the sink, guys, I'm not throwing it on the ground. So let me find my whisk. Hmm. No, nobody panic. Find my whisk. Okay, seriously. Oh, it's right here, where it doesn't belong. You can thank the husband for that. So we're gonna just whisk it all together. Obviously, these are dry ingredients, so you're just gonna whisk it around just so that you can make sure that all the spices are kind of incorporated really well with the cinnamon. And I love the way it smells. This literally smells like a candle that you would buy in the store. It is so good. All right, that looks pretty well incorporated. So now that we've got our dry ingredients all mixed together, we are just going to add in a large bowl all of our wet ingredients and then we're gonna pour the dry ingredients into the wet. It's that easy. So I'm gonna tidy up a little bit, put some stuff away and then I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I got my bowl and I got my can opener and I put some stuff away. So. It wants me to whisk the eggs in a bowl, I believe. Let me double check. So, yes, yes. So we are going to crack our eggs into our bowl and we're gonna whisk those gently. And it just calls for two eggs. So we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna get out my trash can here so I can throw my eggs away or my eggshells away. I'm super weird about um, eggs. Like, that's a very like random broad term. But I am like, ever since I was a child, I don't know why, but I've always been like overly paranoid about salmonella. <laughs> so like, as soon as I touch an egg, I wanna like immediately like scrub my hand and like wash every surface of everything. So let me wash my hands, speaking of that. Okay, hands are clean and washed and some another free. So we're gonna whisk our eggs really quick. Borrow this whisk here. So we're gonna just whisk that together. Just break them up a little bit. And you don't really want to overbeat them, so I just like to break them up a little bit, and then I'll be whisking the entire uh, mixture together once, as I go, I should say. So I'll be mixing the entire mixture together as I go, so I don't want to over whisk right now. So that's good. So let's put our eggs away, and I'll be right back. Okay, eggs are back in the fridge. Now we're gonna open our condensed milk, and our pumpkin, and then like I said, another weird paranoid thing that I always do is I always like wipe off the tops of my cans <laughs> because I just, in case there's like dust, I don't, I'm sure a lot of other people do that too. I just don't want, when I'm opening it, I don't want any dust to fall into the contents of the can. That's logical, right? That's sensible. So the recipe calls for adding the sugar and spice mixture into the bowl with the eggs as well as adding the pumpkin in. Now when you're baking, and like I said, I don't have a lot of experience baking. I'm not a pro. I'm not Cupcake Gemma over here, but here's the dealio. You gotta listen to the recipe for the most part because sometimes the order of operations is really important. Um, 
Yeah, so sometimes the order of operations is really important and you wanna make sure. So this calls for pumpkin mixture first with, or these two together, the pumpkin and the sugar spice mixture. And then afterwards, you're gradually stirring in the evaporated milk. So you're not gonna dump it all in at once, right? Let's add our pumpkin. So I'm just gonna scoop it out and drop it in. I don't want my eggs splashing around. I don't want salmonella splashing all over the place. You guys probably think I'm so weird. Leave it in the comments below if you are also weirdly paranoid about salmonella and dirt on your cans. I shouldn't say dirt because that makes it sound like my house is dirty and my house is not dirty. But you know what I mean, dust. All right, so pumpkin is in, and now we're adding in the spice. So let's add a little bit, and then kind of stir it a little bit. I just like to add it in as I go. Stir, add more, stir. So good. Smells so oh good. All right, so we are adding in our last bit of the sugar spice mixture. It is looking beautiful. It's like the most gorgeous caramelly color of life. Hello. Yum. Okay. We are almost home free. Put my stuff over here. Now we are going to add in our condensed milk mixture. Mixture. Our can of condensed milk. I wouldn't necessarily call them mixture. <laughs> All right, so, oh, and shake it. Make sure you shake it. I pre-shook mine. It says on the can, shake well. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start drizzling it in here and then mixing as I go. The other thing is, I don't know if, about you guys, um, but every year it seems when I make the pumpkin pie mixture, there's always too much. So even though I use the deep dish pie shell, um, I'm gonna set my dish towel down. That way maybe this doesn't like rattle around because I have no idea how the audio is picking up right now with me going squirrel, 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 squirrel. Squirrel? Swirl? Swirl, swirl, swirl. You know what I'm talking about, whisking? Um, I have no idea how the audio is picking up, so let's just hope that it's not just me swirling away and you guys can't hear a word I'm saying when I stir. But um, yeah, I always feel like the proportions, even though there's the nine inch baking dishes, baking dishes, the nine inch pie shells, the deep dish ones, I always still feel like there's like a little extra left over. And it makes me so mad because like, I don't want to waste any pumpkin pie, um, but it, and it's so liquidy. See what I mean about me like whisking away? Like, obviously we're not going to want to overbeat the eggs in the beginning um, because I'm just whisking away over here. So basically you're just going to do this until it is well combined. I think that is good. It's well combined. And 
now we're pretty much home free. So all you're gonna need to do is you're gonna take your pie shell, which I have with me right here. You're going to dump your liquid mixture into your pie shell. And my tip and my struggle um, with making pumpkin pies in the past, um, or just pies in general in the past, is getting it from my countertop to my oven. So I'm always very worried that it's gonna slosh all over the place. So what I do is I just get my baking sheet lined with tin foil and I just put my pie on there. I also have, I don't really know if it makes any difference whatsoever, but I am using a Anilon rectangular um, cookie sheet and then I'm using a griddle, like a little grill thing on top of that and I literally just, I don't know why I do it, but I do it. And then obviously I've got my foil because I don't like spills. And if there is any spills, it's spilled on the foil and I throw the foil away. So we are going to pour our mixture in to our pie shell. So see. Look at that. So I think I'm just gonna pour it until I see it's like moderately full because literally every time it's always way too full. So I think I'm gonna stop right there. Um, there's a little bit left, but I'm just gonna have to live with it um, because, like I said, I don't like it spilling everywhere. So now that we've got our beautiful pie, we're gonna throw it in the oven. So the recipe calls, as I like go over here and get my handy little can. I don't know the recipe by heart, I'm sorry. Okay, so the recipe calls for you to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. I've already done that. It wants you to preheat the oven 425 degrees for 15 minutes. And then once it is preheated, um, reduce the temperature to 350. So it's at 425 right now. It wants that to be preheated for 15 minutes at 425. Now, before I put the pie in, we are going to reduce the heat to 350. So make sure you read the instructions. Because why? Because I'm Serena and in the past, I have burnt an entire pumpkin pie by trying to cook it for 425 degrees for the entire time. Don't do that. What a waste of pumpkin pie. So let's preheat or reduce the heat. Okay, so we've got it back down to 350. And so it wants you to bake it for 40 to 50 minutes until a knife inserted near the center comes out clean. So we're gonna do that. But I have my little secret weapon. If you guys saw my fall haul video, I think like all the way back in September, pie crust covers. Let me find those, wait in there. So if you guys are into making pies like myself, these actually really do come in handy. These are the pie crust covers that I got from William and Sonoma or Sir La Tab, I think. Um, so these are just little silicone pie crust covers. What I do is I let my pumpkin pie or whatever pie cook for a little while. So if this recipe is telling me to bake it for 40 to 50 minutes, I'll probably put the pie in for like 20 or 30 minutes and then see how it's settled up and just keep an eye on my crust. If my crust starts to look a little brown, that's when I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna put my pie crust covers on to protect my crust from burning for the rest of the baking duration. So that's my little Serena tip. Now we are gonna throw this guy in the oven because you guys, I can't wait to eat it. So, I'm gonna get my little handy dandy lobster mitts. 
and get this guy going here. And this is like, ooh, this is like that game operation where you don't want to touch the sides. It's gonna buzz. We can do it. We can do it without spilling, guys. We did it! We did it without spilling the pumpkin filling everywhere. And we probably did that because I didn't pour all the pumpkin mixture in. I resisted my urge to do that. So make sure you set your timer and watch your crusts. I'm gonna set my timer, I'm gonna clean up, and I'm gonna watch my crusts and watch them like a hawk. I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Okay, the timer just went off, and you guys, for once in its life, my oven behaved itself, did not burn my crust, and I didn't even have to use my crust covers, which was like a gift from the pie gods, I guess. So let's pull it out, and I will show you what it looks like. It's beautiful. Let me put my little towel down so we don't burn our granites here. Can you burn granite? Somebody Google that. <laughs> Leave it in the comments below. Can you burn granite? All right, let's get our pie. jiggly in the center. Can you see that? Woo! It's always a little jiggly in the center. I like to let it stay a little bit jiggly because it'll firm up as it cools. Um, and another not so secret tip with pumpkin pie, you stick it in the fridge or just let it, you know, hang out and don't touch it for like 24 hours and it will be way better, like way, way, way better than if you were to eat it like same day fresh. I mean, if you were to eat it like a few hours from now, it's totally cooled all the way through, then I'm sure it's fine. But you guys, second day pumpkin pie tastes so amazing because the spices are all set and, um, everything really sinks in and just gets really, um, I don't know, I feel like, you know how they say like chili, right? I'm not making that up. Like if you make chili, like a bowl of chili or whatever, if you make a pot of chili, it's way better the next day. I feel like that's the same way with pumpkin pie. I feel like the spices just really need time to like soak in and just, oh, it smells so good. I like wanna put it on a cake stand. Maybe I'll put it on a cake stand. Kind of nervous. I don't want it to jiggle all over the place. Hold on. Please stand by. Okay, so I got my pie on a cake stand. Here it is in all its glory. Ah, angel singing. So I don't have that uh, Food Network movie magic where like I can just pull out a pie and be like, "Ooh, here it is." It's still cooling, um, and I really want to eat it right now, but I cannot. But anyways, obviously the way you serve this is let it chill all the way through and make sure that you use a lot, a lot of whipped cream. <laughs> well, at least that's what I do. So anyways, I hope you guys loved this video. I hope you guys love pumpkin pie. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with your families and your friends and eat lots and lots of food for me. And you guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks so much for watching. Mwah. Love you all so much. And we will see you in the next video. That was spirit fingers, huh? We will see you in the next video. Spirit fingers. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>